The economy grew by a strong 4.9%. Based upon the numbers put out by the Federal Reserve, everything is rosy, everyone's doing well, you should be swimming in money. These are spiritually dangerous times, and I'm gonna really get into that. But first, <laughs> I got a chair back there. <laughs> I got a chair back there. The demo people stole my furniture. Y'all have been cracking me up with the jokes about there's no furniture in here. Uh, I have no clue what I'm gonna do with this studio, this room. I have no clue, but keep the jokes coming because they are hilarious. <laughs> All right, so right now, the number has been put out by the Federal Reserve that the economy is doing fine. The economy is real strong. Yet, we have a multitude of people who are making videos on TikTok and YouTube talking about how hard it is, how much they're struggling. And this is where we get into the spiritually dangerous times. What do we know is happening in 2024? we have a presidential election. That's what's happening in 2024. And what we know is typically Obama had a bad economy. He was able to be reelected, but typically a bad economy can spell doom and gloom for the current president. So sometimes they get around that. And one of the things that I feel is we're being fed a narrative. First of all, let's talk about the Fed. The Fed and this interest rate hikes. November is coming up really soon, and we're gonna see if the Fed, due to this strong economy, is going to raise interest rates in November and December. Uh, there's a lot of talks that the Fed will not raise rates, and there's some talks what they will do. We won't know until they actually have the meeting and if we get to see that these interest rates are raised. But this is where I feel that we're getting into some spiritually dangerous stuff. And this is what I'm talking about. All right, I'm a numbers guy. I'm an analytical guy. I like to look at the numbers. I like to sort through this stuff. But the story that the numbers are so good but the reality of all these people who are suffering, there's a disconnect between the numbers and reality. And where does this disconnect come from? One of the things I know, if you didn't know, I used to work in the lab. I used to be uh, somewhat of a medical scientist. Um, and you know, essentially there's something that's called your basic levels. Your glucose has a basic level, your potassium, there's basic levels that you have. And when your levels go below or above the basic level, that usually means something's wrong in your body. And you know, I'm just looking at this whole situation where the economy is supposedly good and Personally, I think that the economy that we have right now is a manufactured economy. This did not just happen. This didn't just happen. And I believe the economy that we have is a manufactured economy from the pandemic era. Because once again, uh, you can't see these videos because I got rid of them, but I talked about how weak the American economy was, the recession that we were having, and how the numbers say one thing, but the reality says another. Reality. Just spend a little time here on YouTube and put DoorDash, Instacart, Spark, Gig Economy, and the number of really attractive women who are doing gig economy work is at an all-time high. Now this is part, now just gonna stick with me, this is kind of part of the breakdown of the family unit and this is part of what's going on with the economy. 
One of the things that is happening, one of the things that's situated, that's a part of the process is we don't have men and women getting together. Like and with my video with Robert Carr, the shooter up in Maine who was found dead later on yesterday. Um, we have a lot of lone wolves. We have a lot, and this is where we get into the spiritually dangerous time. The numbers say the economy's doing well. People say the economy sucks. And then we have in the middle, these dangerous individuals who may just be sitting at home one day watching the television and it's like, you know what? I'm gonna take my gun and I'm gonna go out to this elementary school and shoot a bunch of kids. Or I'm gonna take my gun and go to a mall and shoot a bunch of people I don't know. This is where we get spiritually dangerous because growing up, I, I'll tell you a strange little story. Everyone that I knew lived in a house growing up. There were no homeless people in my neighborhood, not a one. And because I was a child and I didn't understand how the world worked, I thought the coolest thing in the world was to live in an apartment because essentially everyone that I knew lived in a house. And I was like, it'll be cool to live in an apartment. And maybe that's why I had the, the high rise thing with Buckhead. Maybe it was a childhood dream to live in an apartment. But that was me as a child looking at it without really understanding the whole drama of living in a high rise because um, this is something that I probably will not ever do again. Once again, I said probably there's a chance if I ever move in town again, it will be in a high rise condo with a limited population because that was one of my biggest issues uh, living where I used to live was we had people doing the craziest stuff and we had people from all the walks of life. We had people, uh, there was a couple that moved from Korea that were living there, you know, and we had this mixture of high tone people and this mixture of common class people. And I, I, I'll, I'll talk about this in a future video, but that was one of the problems that people wanted to play their music loud at three o'clock in the morning because they didn't have a normal, regular job. And, you know, with this whole news that the economy is booming and flourishing and doing all this stuff, that's not the reality. The reality, because, you know, it makes me kind of think the government is playing a Jedi mind trick on us because they put out these numbers of the reports and stuff supposed to be doing well, and literally you're supposed to be swimming in money. And the reality is the average American cannot afford to buy the average American house and the average American cannot afford to buy the average car based upon standard mathematical ways that banks allocate money for loans based upon those things the standard person can't buy a house. The standard person can't buy a car. The standard person can't get financed. It's really, really interesting. So this is where I feel we're going to get spiritually dangerous because we have these messages, these messages coming from these government silos. And I've seen in the comments, it's like, you know, you can't trust the government. You can't trust what they say. And here is something that lends a lot of credence to that mindset that the government saying that the economy is fine and then popular people are saying, no, it's not. And it's not like it's one or two, it's millions of people who are saying that the economy is not fine. The economy is not doing well. And one of the things that we have to look at is, you know, back to the furniture. I may keep this look. Like I said, I have no clue to what I'm going to be doing here. I do have a chair back there. I do have a chair. Make it a light. But one of the things that 
we have to look at is the reality of the economy and the reality of your personal economy, the reality of you making money, the reality of you being able to live and do the things that you need to do in this current economy. How are you doing that? How are you existing? How are you making do? Because, you know, I don't really look at what the other person's doing from a financial standpoint. I just look at my own personal finances and go from there. But there's a lot of people who are making these videos who are talking about how bad the economy is. And they're looking at how other people are doing. And I can tell you, there are people who are getting fantastically rich in this economy. This, this economy, this economy right now. There are people who are getting fantastically rich. There are people who are making a lot of money. There are content creators who are making 500,000 bucks per month. So you have a group of people who are making a fantastic amount of money. And then you have a larger group of people that is struggling. And part of that is the, the pandemic economy with the, the things with going on with the pandemic. And let's, I'll probably do a whole video on that, the pandemic economy, because one of the things that you're going to see and one of the things that you're going to spend a lot of time in is looking at all of these cycles, the mortgage cycle, the car financing cycle, the credit card cycle. And these numbers are getting higher and higher. The delinquency rates for everything is getting higher and higher and higher. And with these delinquency rates, we're going to see some real economic pain across the United States as we go. And this is where we get into it's spiritually dangerous. It's spiritually dangerous because one of the things that I find to be really, really interesting is the number of YouTube videos talking about how much YouTube paid me. And for me, YouTube revenue has always been my lowest income source. You know, the money that YouTube actually pays me for running ads on the videos. And I began to actually watch these videos and it kind of hit me why these videos are so popular. And it kind of reminds me of a friend that I had a friend who wanted to get into business and he was kind of struggling and going back and forth. And then he actually got in business and he had a sale. And I remember the text like it was yesterday. He said, oh, man, this is real. And for all of these people out here who are trying to make money from YouTube, who are trying to make money from content creation, it's not real. And that's something that really escaped me because when I started this YouTube channel, I didn't make money from YouTube for about two years, you know, because essentially, you know, YouTube has changed dramatically. But the reality of being able to do something and to earn money from it for a lot of people, because literally I, I sat down and I watched a lot of these videos, how much YouTube has paid me, how much YouTube has paid me. And these people were tickled. They was like, I made $95 on my first day. And the look on this girl's face was one of fascination and awe and wonder. And this kind of goes back with the pandemic. First of all, let me go ahead and be really careful with about this. The pandemic exposed people to a lifestyle where they didn't have to worry about their car getting repossessed. They didn't have to worry about getting evicted. They didn't have to worry about getting foreclosed. They got direct stimulus checks and they got enhanced unemployment. So the pandemic showed people a different world. Okay. And then when people come to YouTube and they start making YouTube videos and then they at the, on the 21st of the month, they get some cash. They're like, wow, this is possible. I can actually make money from doing something that I enjoy. This is possible. And this opens up a doorway. This opens up a very large doorway that, Hey, and I have seen it. I have seen it. The number of YouTube content creators, once their income gets to a certain point, 
there's a guy in the credit card space by the name of Daniel Braun. Daniel graduated college. Daniel had a nice job. His YouTube channel took off. He quit his job and he's a full time content creator now. And I have seen this over and over and over and over and over the number of people who are making full time content as a living is beyond anything I've ever seen before. And this is, this isn't spiritually dangerous. This is a more of a positive, but with the economies going the way that it is, there are so many people with two and three jobs is it ain't funny just to make it just to live. So yeah, you got a choice. You can believe the government or you can look at your reality. Which one do you want to believe the government or your present reality? Which one rings true? Which one rings very, very prominent to you in your daily life?